And if you're a young guy or girl just getting into this, count yourself lucky because I think you've got a front row seat for what's gonna be a really cool special time for hardcore. What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we're here to talk about something I've gotten a lot of requests for, and that is Knocked Loose. I've been wanting to make a video about this band for a while, but to be honest, I just kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to say. Like, I knew there was something special and cool about the band, but just kind of couldn't really put my finger on it. But then I caught them last week when they came through here on tour with CU Space Cowboy, Candy, Rotting Out, and my friends and Stick to Your Guns, and that is when it clicked for me. Hardcore is back, my friends. Not that it ever really like died or went away completely, but I do think it was in a little bit of a rut for a while. But by the power officially vested in me by the state, I am officially declaring that Hardcore is back. The scene is stronger than it's been in like 10 or 15 years, I would say. And Knocked Loose are at the forefront of the whole thing, along with a few other bands that I'm gonna talk about as well in this video. But before I get into that, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. And best of all, there's a free two month trial using the promo link in the description for this video. If any of you are interested in design, whether that's lettering or typography, anything like that, I would highly suggest you check out Jessica Hish's Logo Design Masterclass. Skillshare is also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So if you want to get your learn on and support the channel by showing Skillshare how awesome this audience is, hit that link, sign up, and we'll see you there. So, like I said, that show last week is really what made the whole Knocked Loose thing kind of click into place for me. The venue was sold out on a Wednesday night, which is awesome because here in Seattle, hardcore shows very rarely draw well at all, let alone sell out. It was packed. There was like a line for merch as soon as the doors opened. The opening band, CU Space Cowboy, played to a packed house, which again is very rare, very cool. There was just a ton of energy in the air. It felt awesome. And I heard a lot of other people say the same thing, so I know that I was not alone. Alone. There was honestly just something special happening that night. We're starting a special two-part show on a very sensitive and important subject. So as far as Knocked Loose, I actually think it's bigger than just them, and that is what I wanted to talk about in this video. I guess the best way to put it is that I'm feeling the sense of like energy and community and creativity that made me fall in love with hardcore in the first place back in the 90s. It was such a cool time. There were so many great bands, and I'm talking about like 94 to 99, I would say it was the prime years of that scene, but the big three would be Snapcase, Earth Crisis, and Strife. Some of the other bands from that era that I was into, you might know about would be like VOD, Downset, Turmoil, Bloodlet, Overcast, Disembodied, Morning Again. I could go on forever. There were so many awesome bands and I consider myself really, really fortunate that I got to see pretty much all of them in their prime. Now I'm fully aware that I may just sound like an old guy talking about how awesome it was back in the day, but it was just a really fucking cool time for hardcore. And honestly, I think if we're speaking objectively, it was a high water mark for hardcore, not just musically, but also culturally. Like hardcore was having a moment back then. If you were around back then, you know what I'm talking about. And I talked about this quite a bit in my Earth Crisis video, so I'm not gonna go on at length about it. But to me, it felt like hardcore suddenly turned into something more than just a bunch of kids playing in their basement. Earth Crisis were getting all this like mainstream news coverage on CNN and Geraldo and all this stuff. Man, why don't you just say it, Carl? Spit kids. it out, spit it out. Them and VOD were playing with these big metal bands like Machine Head and Sepultura, traveling all over the world, introducing kids in city after city, country after country to hardcore, putting out all these classic albums that we still listen to today. Like, there was just something happening back then. And I'm not saying that hardcore died after that or anything, because that's a bunch of bullshit. Hardcore obviously didn't die. But I do think it kind of fell into a bit of a rut for a while. Like the bands were all kind of sounding the same. There was nobody that really stood out. They're all just kind of rehashing what older bands had done without really adding anything new. And I thought that hardcore maybe would kind of suffer the same fate as punk. Still around, but kind of stagnant and irrelevant, just kind of existing in the background, kind of in its own little corner of the world that nobody else cares about. He's not dead and just deserves to die when it becomes another stale cartoon.
But that show and the new Knocked Loose album, which I'll talk about in a minute, that made me think otherwise. I think hardcore didn't die. It was maybe just kind of hibernating for a while. You know, it ebbs and flows. It goes through these periods where it's strong and then it's weak and then it comes back stronger than ever. And I think that's what's happening right now. I think we're at the like beginning of one of those periods where it's gonna be really fucking awesome for a few years. And Knocked Loose is at the forefront of that. Their latest album went to number 26 on Billboard, which is damn good for a hardcore band. They're currently sitting at 270,000 listeners on Spotify, which is more than Turnstile or Code Orange. And I don't know, that's pretty fucking impressive to me. And I'm not surprised because first of all, this album is really, really fucking good. Yes, it is a chugga chugga, like hardcore kind of album for kids to punch each other in the face to. Yes, it's heavy as shit, but it's not just like that riff salad beat down kind of stuff that so many other bands do. And kind of puts me to sleep. They have like actual songs with hooks. Tons of super catchy dance parts where I'm sure when they wrote them, they're like, oh shit, the kids are gonna go off for this one. Now, I'm not gonna say that they're like God tier pop songwriters like Lady Gaga or something like that, but as far as hardcore goes, they have what matters. Heavy ass breakdowns and cool lines that people can like finger point and sing along to before they go kill each other moshing. Like this one. I have a bone to pick with this. And of course, the iconic Arf Arf. Oh, oh. And my personal favorite, this one. And beyond that, I think they're like the perfect transition band that like the former scene kid can use to be their gateway into hardcore. Like for all those former brutal kids, they don't really sound that different from like a Suicide Silence breakdown. Like, listen to this. My, my Compared to this. Not that far off, right? And they also use a lot of those like kind of creepy, flangy, corn kind of riffs like this. Which will sound very familiar to all those kids out there that grew up on new metal, which let's be honest, is the majority of hardcore kids these days. So it's still hardcore, but it's still super accessible to a kid that was listening to like Whitechapel or Slipknot a couple years ago. And if you've watched many of my videos, you know how important I think the charismatic front man and front woman is. And Brian Garris is a great one. I think he's like the perfect front man and vocalist for this band. For one, and this is kind of a subtle thing, but I think it's important. The fact that he has like a higher pitched voice, I think is a big deal because it makes them a lot more accessible and relatable than a lot of the other beat down bands that have more of those like gruff, burly, what I call like fat guy vocals. For example, like this. <laughs> which just like instantly makes me think of some big burly guy with like a shaved head and a beard. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think that's like a less relatable kind of image to the kid that was listening to say Motionless and White a couple years ago. And let's be real, looks matter. And Brian is a really good looking kid, especially now that he cut his hair. I actually kind of didn't really notice that until now. When I was watching them, I was like, man, he looks like a pissed off young Leonardo DiCaprio, like pacing back and forth. He really almost has the look of somebody that could be in a pop punk band, which again, I think is perfect if we're going with this idea of Knock Loose as being the gateway band for former scene kids. It's not a phase and I'm not gonna change, okay? And also, if we're talking about factors for their success, this is a little bit of inside baseball, but I think they've done an awesome job of putting together the right team to support them. They got Will Putney to produce their last two albums, who is absolutely the best in the world when it comes to like this kind of like modern, super heavy hardcore. They're managed by Good Fight, who also manage Every Time I Die, Turnstile, Harm's Way, a bunch of other bands and that shit matters. This is just like sports. The best team wins, and these guys have put together a great team behind them. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse but what's so exciting to me is that it's not just Knocked Loose. Yes, they're the breakout band, just like Earth Crisis was the breakout band in the 90s, but there are a ton of other awesome hardcore bands getting a lot of traction along with Knocked Loose. To name a few, like Code Orange, Turnstile, Angel Dust, Vane, Varials, Twitching Tongues, Jesus Peace, and there's probably like half a dozen other bands that deserve to be on that list too. Those are all great bands, but what's really cool about it, and again, this reminds me of the golden years of the like victory scene in the late 90s, yes, they're they're all kind of loosely under the banner of hardcore, but they all sound different and they all bring kind of a slightly different fan base. Code Orange and Vane are doing a little bit more of the like late 90s new metal influence kind of thing. Turnstile and Angel Dust are doing the like punky alternative rock thing. Right. No, 
switching tongues have that like typo negative, life of agony meets moshcore kind of sound. Wrist meets Razor and CU Space Cowboy are bringing back the like math core sass kind of vibe, but without all the cringy shit and terrible attitudes. <laughs> All these bands have a really distinctive identity and sound, just like Snapcase and Earth Crisis and Strife had their own identity and sound back in the day. And I think that's really important for a healthy scene because when everybody looks and sounds the same, that gets stale real fast, people get bored and they leave. Like say six or seven years ago when pretty much every band sounded like a shittier version of Terror. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Terror, but do we need 20 bands that sound like a worse version of them? I don't think so. Let's pull this new fucking record out. And by the way, for anybody who thinks that these aren't like real hardcore bands because they don't sound like, you know, Agnostic Front or whatever you think real hardcore is supposed to sound like. I can't speak for all these bands, but I can assure you that some of these bands are most definitely 100% legit about DIY hardcore. Like, I talked to the kids in CU Space Cowboy for quite a while at this show and holy shit, they know like every old obscure 90s band, like every single one of them. These kids are the real deal, make no mistake. Hate breed satisfaction is the death of desire. Killing time bright side and either Madball set it off or Madball hold it down. Which brings me to my last point, which is probably the most important part of all this. Hardcore really is as much a community as it is a genre of music. Like you could reasonably include everything from like Madball to Title Fight to Power Trip to Dillinger Escape Plan under the heading of hardcore, even though they sound completely different. They're kind of like distant cousins that don't talk all that often, but when it's time for the family reunion, they all show up and you're reminded that they're all family. And this show was such a cool example of that. Like I saw I saw so many people that I knew there, which normally I don't. I saw people that I've known since like the 90s that are like my age. I saw people that I met a year ago that are half my age. Like my neighbor was there who's I think like a junior in high school. Shout out to Pedro if you happen to be watching this. And I think that's a big deal. That's a great measure of like scene health. That like multi-generational kind of appeal because lots of times bands are either one or the other. Like they're a band for old people like me and my friends and the kids don't give a shit. Or it's a band that all the kids love but all the old people think they're too good for it. So the fact that this show brought together people from like three generations of hardcore was just really fucking cool to me. We're all here to love and support and encourage each other. I just felt like I was back at an Earth Crisis show at Peabody's in Cleveland in 98, knowing that I would see all my friends there. And anybody there that I didn't know, I felt like was somebody that I'd probably end up being friends with if we ever did hang out. Like just one big happy family. And Knock Blues were kind of like the vehicle that made it all happen. So for everybody who wanted me to do a video about Knock Blues, here you go, this is it. But like I said, it's really about more than just Knock Loose because really it's not just them, it's them plus like 10 other bands who all bring something like cool and unique to the table. And I don't know, I'm just like really excited to see where this goes over the next couple years. So if you're an old fart like me and a lot of my friends who think that hardcore died in whatever year, do yourself a favor, go see this band. They will make you feel 15 years younger. At least they did for me. Now I feel like I could live to be a hundred, which has always been my goal. And if if you're a young guy or girl just getting into this shit, like count yourself lucky because I think you've got a front row seat for what's gonna be a really cool special time for hardcore. So don't stay home, get out there, experience it, make some friends because these moments do not last forever. All right, there is my Knock Loose video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear from any older people. Like, did you get that same kind of goosebumps feeling as I did? Or from any younger people, does it feel like something special is happening? Or am I just being a delusional old man? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Before I let you go, I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon at the true cult level or above. Patrons get access to a bunch of cool stuff, such as an audio only podcast feed of all the videos, a private Discord server, Server, monthly Q and A's. There's an opportunity for me to review your band or podcast or social media, whatever it is. Bunch of other cool stuff. If you are interested in that, there's a link to that in the description. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.